This video is my second video on Markov chains. And if you haven't seen the first video on Markov chains, check out the link down in the description. In this video, we're going to use some formalisms of linear algebra, the idea of matrices, the idea of vectors, and how to multiply those to make the kinds of manipulations that we need to do when studying a Markov chain much, much simpler. Indeed, in the introduction video, we ended with a computational difficulty that we're going to solve in this particular video. So here's the idea. Imagine I have a transition diagram. That's what this is. A transition diagram lists the possible states of some system. So in this example, it might be in state A or state B. And then there's a bunch of arrows between those states and the numbers on each arrow describe the probability. So for example, the 0.75 that is on the arrow that goes from state A to state A represents that there's a 75% probability that state A in one iteration is going to transition to being state A in the next. So what I'm going to do first is introduce some notation to help me describe different things. The first is going to be what I will call S0. And this is referred to as the initial state of the system. And it's a vector. It's got a 1 and a 0. So what does that mean? So basically, the top component of my vector refers to state A and the bottom component to state B. If you had more components in your system, A, B, C, for example, then you'd have three components in your vector. And the fact that it says 1 and 0 means there's a 100% probability that it starts in state A and a 0% probability it starts in state B. I just asserted this. But it could have been something different. Perhaps your initial state would have two different probabilities that would add up to 1. So this S0 vector is just a little bit of formalism to encode the initial state of the system. Indeed, I sort of highlighted it in pink in my transition diagram just to illustrate I'm starting at state A. Okay, then I want to go to S1. S1 is the state after one iteration. That is, if I start at my S0, my initial state, and I go one iteration into the future, I am then at S1, the state after one iteration. And likewise, the 0.75 and the 0.25, the top number is still referred to as the state A, and the second number is referred to as the state B. And so the 0.75 in the S1 is referring to the fact that there's a 75% chance of it being back in state A after one iteration. So then the question becomes, how can I manipulate to go from the S0 to the S1? I mean, in this case, we were able to sort of figure out what the S1 was just by looking at the diagram. But I can then follow up on this. Well, how do I go from S1 to S2, the state after two iterations? Or S2 to S100? Is there a process that allows me to do those types of manipulations efficiently? And indeed, the answer is yes, there is. And we're going to use the notion of a matrix. How this works is, let's consider the transition diagram. There are four numbers. So let me just forget the rest of the diagram for a moment and just pull those four numbers together. This is going to be called a matrix, an array of different numbers. The way I think about this is, I imagine that my columns are denoted with an A and a B, and I imagine that my rows are denoted with an A and a B. So something like the 0.75 represents, if I start in state A, I will end up in state A. Something like the 0.4 says, if I start in state B, it's in the second column, so if I start in state B, then I will end up in state A. That's what the 0.4 represents. This type of matrix is called a transition matrix, and we often just write it as P for the transition matrix. Now, here is the magic of matrix algebra. The formula to go from S0 to S1 is just multiplying by this matrix P. In other words, S1 is P times S0. And if I want to write that out with the actual information, in this case, the S1 was the 0 0.75, 0 0.25, the P was that matrix, and the S0 was the 1, 0. This is matrix vector multiplication. Now, if you don't know what matrix vector multiplication is, that's totally fine. So I have a video for you that introduces matrix vector multiplication. It has nothing to do with Markov chain specifically because this little piece of algebra is useful all over the place. And I would encourage you to check that video out and make sure you're comfortable doing matrix vector multiplication. I'm just going to assume that for the rest of this video. Nevertheless, for the purpose of this particular video, all that's worth noting is that when you do this multiplication on the right, you get exactly that vector that we predicted on the left. Now, thus far, we haven't really gotten a big improvement because you are capable of coming up with the S1 just by looking at the diagram. We didn't need to do all this formalism. But what about going towards S2? The second state is, again, just take that transition matrix 
and multiply it now to the S1. In other words, I can go and take a look at this. This is going to be a new multiplication, that same transition matrix, but multiplied by 0 0.75, 0 0.25. And if you do that matrix vector multiplication, you get 0 0.66, 0 0.34 for the S2. Now, I want to note that in the first video on Markov processes, we actually did this computation via a tree diagram and I showed how to justify it. And so right now, I really just want to note that using this matrix method gives us the same answer that we've done in the past. But now it generalizes. What have I just done? If I just look at this S2 is P times S1, S1 was P times S0. So in other words, what this is is P squared times S0. And in general, if I wanted to figure out what the nth state of my Markov processes would be, it would be just start at the S0, start at the initial state, and then multiply by n transition matrices p to the n. And this is my final answer for how I can do manipulations in Markov chains. The nth state is just this transition matrix multiplied n times to the initial state. So if you're given a problem about a Markov process, the main steps are going to be to, one, write down that transition diagram so you can get all the numbers, two, take that transition diagram and put it into a matrix form, and then three, you can figure out any future state just by multiplication of that matrix a sufficient number of times. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video on how to use transition matrices to solve problems in Markov chains. Uh, if you have any questions about the video, please leave them down in the comments. If you like the video, give it a like for that YouTube algorithm, and we'll do some more math in the next video.